Welcome to the sixth lecture of the course Marine Propulsion. Today we will be continuing with propeller theory. So the basic concepts which will be discussed in today's class will be blade element theory and from that blade element theory how we can calculate the sectional thrust torque and efficiency for the propeller blade. Okay. So before going into the details let us try to understand what are the assumptions of the propeller blade element theory. In this theory we have the propeller blade which is regarded as a series of blade elements. Initially we have started with the most simple theory which is the axial momentum theory where the propeller blade per se was not considered. So we had only a disc we had only a momentum disc which provided the thrust. So, there was no shape or configuration of the propeller blade. But in this particular theory where we will go into slightly more details, we have the propeller blade which is regarded as a series of elements or different sections of the propeller blade and each of them will produce some force depending on the inflow condition. Okay. And from that how will it, how we are going to compute the propeller forces, we will have the axial component of that force which is the thrust and then we have the tangential component the moment of which about the propeller axis will be called the torque. Okay. So, for the propeller we have different sections uh, at different cylindrical sections which we are calling the blade elements at different radii and each of them will have the sectional thrust and torque depending on the velocity conditions okay. and then the total thrust and torque of the propeller blade can be obtained by integration of these elemental thrust and torque at this radii. So, what we do is we for each element we can compute the thrust and torque of the propeller and then we can integrate them over the blade over the part of the blade which is producing so that from the hub to the tip and then that gives us the total thrust and torque of the propeller. Okay. Now let us try to look into the different aspects of the blade element theory. So, we have the propeller blade okay. this is the radius of the propeller blade r okay. and the blade is fitted over the boss or the hub this is the radius of the hub okay. and let us take any cylindrical section at a radius small r okay, of thickness dr. Okay. So, this is basically the blade element. So, in this particular theory we are considering the blade to be consisting of a number of such elements right from the root of the propeller blade the root section here to the tip of the propeller blade here and for each blade element depending on the inflow velocities and finally, we will calculate the angles based on that we will calculate the forces from where thrust and torque can be computed. Okay. Now, let us see 
how a blade element will provide the forces for that uh, again as per we have uh, discussed in the propeller geometry so this propeller blade consists of different radial sections that we can take at different locations along the radius of the propeller blade now each of these sections typically can be considered as simple airfoil sections and depending on the flow characteristics over those sections the sections generate force so let us say this is a section we have taken of the propeller blade at any particular radius and we have an inflow to that section at an angle of attack alpha okay so what will happen it will generate a force which is lift perpendicular to the inflow vector and also it will generate a drag force so l is the lift and d is the drag drag of that particular section okay now from that how do we calculate the lift and drag coefficient if we divide the lift by half rho a v square we get the lift coefficient okay similarly if we divide the drag force d by half rho a v square we get the drag coefficient okay now what is a here if i take the plan form area so this is basically we have drawn the velocity with respect to the baseline here the angle shown so this is the chord length of the propeller blade uh, of this particular section okay so if we take a three dimensional foil okay so the plan form area that we have which consists of this chord two dimensions and the other one is the span s so this area will be given as span into chord okay so this is the area which is used to calculate the lift and drag coefficient okay now how does these uh, forces depend on the angle of attack especially the lift is very important for us uh, because that is the part which is uh, most important in uh, calculating the propeller forces that we do from the sectional properties so if i draw this lift as a function of angle of attack let's say lift coefficient okay so the typical curve will be like this okay so at zero angle of attack there will be a small value of lift coefficient that will come due to the camber of the foil okay we have uh, gone through the basics of foil section where uh, in the propeller geometry so if the foil is a symmetric foil okay where the uh, foil section is symmetric about the center line okay then in that case the foil will not generate any uh, lift at zero angle of attack but if the foil is cambered it will generate a small lift at zero angle of attack and the lift will be zero the value of cl will be zero at a value of negative angle of attack okay this is the no lift angle alpha 0 where actually cl is 0 now this is required because when we now go to the blade element theory and calculate the propeller forces we will require this basic concept of uh, variation of lift coefficient with angle of attack okay so we will use these concepts now to calculate the forces on this particular blade element at a radius small r for this case what will be the forces based on the velocity 
at that particular section. Now, if I look at a propeller blade, it is rotating as well as moving ahead. Here we have a case where you have a velocity which is coming to the propeller blade which is the inflow velocity or as the propeller blade is advancing. So, it is a velocity of advance we call it V A. Now, when we discuss the basic momentum theory from axial momentum theory point of view there were no other velocities which, which was considered except the axial velocity there was no rotational component in the axial momentum theory uh, the uh, original one. So, in the axial momentum theory we had only the propeller moving at a forward velocity v it was mentioned as a very generic value v. But here we would prefer to use the term v a because later we will see that this is not equal to the ship speed. Okay. So, the propeller velocity of advance will be the velocity at which the propeller is advancing that means if we are standing in the position of the propeller that is the velocity that we will be experiencing. So, it is you can assume it as the averaged velocity at the location of the propeller in the axial direction. Okay. So, if I think of a propeller blade let us say rotating blade at any radius okay, the velocity in the axial direction is V a which is perpendicular to the plane of the board here. So, this as shown as a dot will be V a and as the propeller blade rotates. So, if the propeller blade is rotating because of the rotation there will be a tangential component of the velocity which is 2 pi r m because we have taken the section at a radius small r where n is the rotational speed of the propeller blade. Okay. So, let us define a few terms be before we start to draw the diagram related to the velocity components. So, V a is the speed of advance n is the rotational speed in RPS okay. and r is the propeller radius okay. and let us say z is the number of blades of the propeller and d is the propeller diameter. Okay. Now, for any section at taken at a radius small r of the propeller blade because of the propeller blade pitch the section will have a pitch angle right. So, phi is the pitch angle or here in this case it is the face pitch angle because we have drawn the line simply on the face of the section. Okay. So, which is given by tan phi is equal to p by 2 pi r where p is the pitch of the propeller blade at that location. Okay. So, it can be a fixed pitch propeller or the pitch can be varying with radius that is a different thing, but here we will have the propeller face of the propeller blade at the section at radius r at an angle phi based on the pitch. right? Now, what are the velocity components? We have the velocity V a here perpendicular which is shown here V a and we have another velocity which is 2 pi r n. Now, V a and 2 pi r n are 
mutually perpendicular to each other. So, this is V A and we have 2 pi R n from the tangential component okay, as the propeller blade rotates at the speed rotational speed of n R P. So, the resultant velocity to this section can be drawn using this vector diagram which is basically V r the resultant of V a and 2 pi r right. We call this particular angle beta where beta is called the hydrodynamic inflow angle because beta depends on the two velocity components V a and 2 pi r n. So, beta is basically a hydrodynamic inflow angle depending on the hydrodynamic characteristics depending on the velocity values. Okay. Now, on the other hand phi this phase pitch angle is a geometric characteristic of the propeller blade. So, phi does not depend on the velocity wave. Okay. Now, what is the angle of attack? If V r is the resultant velocity and the phase pitch angle is at an angle phi here. So, the angle of attack will be alpha alpha is the angle of attack at this propeller blade section. The angle which V r makes with the phase pitch line of the propeller blade. So, alpha is given as phi minus beta. Okay. Now, in this part we have drawn the velocities. Okay. On the other half which I have left empty, we will draw the forces. Okay. So, we have seen for the airfoil section, what are the forces that are generated due to a resultant velocity? We will have the lift and drag forces. The drag forces, the drag force along the line of the resultant velocity v r and the lift force perpendicular to this line. Okay. Because these are sectional lift and drag forces, we will name it as d l and d d. Okay. Now, finally, what do we need for the propeller blade section? We will need the thrust and torque. Now, the thrust which is the resultant force in the axial direction and the torque is the moment of the tangential component about the propeller axis. Now, which is the axial direction? V a is the velocity which is coming here also. So, the thrust should be directed opposite to the direction of V a because V a is the velocity which is coming on the propeller plane and the propeller is moving ahead. So, thrust should be directed vertically in the upwards direction in this. So, we will have thrust along the vertical axis. Now, what is the resultant of these two forces? If I try to draw this, the resultant of d l and d d will be directed in this particular direction. And now, if I try to draw the component on the two mutually perpendicular axis, we will have the thrust d t and the other force which leads to the torque. So, because the moment of that force where r is the arm is the torque. So, we call it d q by r okay. because 
torque is a moment. Now, here one more thing will come, we will assume that dt is the elemental thrust provided by the propeller blade over all the blades. So, the propeller depending on the design may have 3, 4 or 5 number of blades. Okay. So, in this case the blade number is z. Okay. So, for each blade if dt is the thrust produced by all the blades taken to all the blade elements at a radius r taken together then the thrust produced by one blade at the radius r is given by 1 by z dt. Okay. Similarly, the torque will be 1 by z dq by r. Okay. So, now we have both the velocity diagram as well as the force diagram which forms the basis of the blade element theory. From here, we will now compute the thrust and torque of this particular blade element. So, here the aim is to calculate the elemental thrust and torque and finally, calculate the efficiency of the propeller blade element. So, we can write 1 by z dt equal to what? Here this angle is equal to beta, right? that is how lift and drag are defined with respect to the resultant velocity v r, okay, which is inclined at beta with respect to the horizontal line and similarly this is also beta. Okay. So, 1 by z dt from the components we can calculate will be dl cos beta minus dd sin beta. Okay. Because dt the component the component from dl will increase dt and the component from the drag dd will decrease dt. Okay. So, we can write this as 1 by z dt equal to dl cos beta common 1 minus dd by dl tan beta. Okay. Similarly, we can write 1 by z dq by r equal to dl sin beta plus dd cos beta. Now, here interestingly for the torque we have both the components of lift L sin beta and D co, DD cos beta which will add up to give the total one from this diagram. Okay. So, this is plus here. So, 1 by z dq 1 by r z dq let us write equal to d L cos beta we will take dl cos beta as common and write the first as tan beta plus dd by dl. Okay. So, let this be 1 and this be 2. Right. Now, we will use a simplification, we will write dd by dl the ratio of the sectional drag by the sectional lift force as tan gamma okay, for ease of computation. So, we will write d d by d l equal to tan gamma. Now, from 1 we have d t equal to z d l cos beta 1 minus tan beta tan gamma. So, this is let us say 3 and from 2 we have 
d q equal to r z d l cos beta tan beta plus tan gamma this is 4. Okay. So, this gives the sectional thrust and torque based on the lift and drag of the blade section. Okay. Now, how is efficiency defined? Efficiency is defined by the output power divided by the power absorbed by the propeller blade section here. Now, how is it defined? We have efficiency eta is defined by d t is the thrust of the propeller blade element multiplied by V a by 2 pi n into d q. Okay. So, we will try to use section to calculate the efficiency of the propeller blade element. So, this efficiency is the efficiency of the blade element at the radius r. Okay. So, if we write the efficiency here, then we will be V a by 2 pi n into d t by d q. Right? Now, using equations 3 and 4, okay, efficiency can be written as V a by 2 pi n into z d l cos beta 1 minus tan beta tan gamma by z r z d l cos beta into tan beta plus tan gamma. Okay. So, this efficiency becomes z d l cos beta is cancels out. So, it is V a by 2 pi r n into 1 minus tan beta tan gamma by tan beta plus tan gamma. Okay. Now, one final line, what is this fraction V a by 2 pi r n. V a is the velocity of advance and 2 pi r n is the velocity due to the rotational component. Okay. So, V a by 2 pi r n from this figure is nothing but tan of this angle beta okay. and what is 1 minus tan beta tan gamma by tan beta plus tan gamma that is 1 by tan beta plus gamma. So, this efficiency becomes a multiplication of tan beta and 1 by tan beta plus gamma. So, we can write the final efficiency is tan beta by tan of beta plus gamma okay. from Yeah. Right. Uh, now, let us look into the efficiency equation directly equal to tan beta by tan beta plus gamma. Now, how is gamma defined? Tan gamma is defined as C d by C l okay. or the sectional drag by sectional lift because C d and C l are uh, obtained by dividing D d and D l by the 
same quantity which is half rho a v square. Okay. So, when is tan gamma 0? When if I assume that drag is 0, if there is no drag then tan gamma will be 0. So, in that case the efficiency of the blade element will be tan beta by tan beta which is 1. Okay. This is a very curious observation from the blade element theory where if we neglect drag we can obtain an efficiency of 1. Okay. So, in the axial momentum theory we have considered the induced velocity, the axial induced velocity and that is how we have computed the efficiency. But in this blade element theory the basic calculation that we have done right now we have not considered any induced velocity. That is why the efficiency computed here has come to 1 if we neglect drag. Okay. So, we will continue with blade element theory with the induced velocities in the next class.